I just, it's like, oh. and I don't like, I hate crying, I really, especially, <laughs> I hate crying. I don't cry in front of corporations. <laughs> I need to see your driver's license. Put your camera down, put your equipment down. Let me have your driver's license now. I can show you. I thought you were going to get arrested. Oh. And then is when he told yeah. me, put the camera down. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, that's a hoot. <laughs> You've been, you've been fighting for these bays a long time now. A long time, probably about 13 years now. And this isn't your first hunger strike. This uh, is, this, no. you've done this before. Uh, this is my fifth hunger strike. Ooh. Yeah. So how did the past four hunger strikes go? Were any of them against Dow? Uh, I had three against Formosa, one against DuPont, and this one's against Union Carbide Dow. Mm -hmm. How did those other four go? What came uh, out of them? Uh, the, the first one I got results in, in 12 days and uh, 12 days and the 12, first one first one was 12 days the second one I got a result in 14 days and it was we was negotiating with this company to get all these provisions we got these provisions for the workers we got provisions for the community we got to have experts to go inside the plant and inspect it ourselves we shook hands with them. They were fiercely wanting me to go get a hamburger. And <laughs> two days later, they reneged on it. They just, I mean, there is, I have yet to see the honest corporation, quite frankly. And so I learned something from that one is, when you go on a hunger strike, you do not get off too soon. Environmental activists said, Diane, you cannot do a hunger strike. It's like women don't do a hunger strike. People in Texas don't do a hunger strike. Maybe if you're California, you might do a hunger strike, but they don't do them down here. And it's like, I'm gonna do a hunger strike. Okay, so what does Diane look like on a hunger strike? Cause I've never been there. Slam. <laughs> really? She loses a lot of weight, huh? <laughs> what do your friends say about Diane Wilson? Some of them say she's crazy and some of them say she's smart. Is she crazy? I don't think she's standing up for what she believes in. She's trying to look out for the health of the younger generation. If that's crazy, I want to be crazy. I want the younger generation to live a better life than I live. Dan, you know that friend of yours who came by earlier, Bucky? Oh, yeah, Bucky. What's wrong with him? He looks like he's uh, sick. Bucky's got cancer, and he doesn't have any health insurance. Is this normal, like cancer in this town? Uh, cancer in this town is rampant. It's like I said, the, I mean, in this county, the big joke is if you work for the Union Carbide plant, which is now the Dow plant, you're going to eventually die of liver cancer or brain cancer. If you work for Alcoa, you're going to die of asbestosis or some type of lung disease. That's just the way it is. Most people say, well, you know, if we don't have the big industries in the county, they bring in plenty of jobs, we need work, which is fine, but, you know, to make a living, you're gonna have to sacrifice your health. All these plants do not like to look like they're bad apples. They wanna give this pristine image. Matter of fact, you look on one of those tires, you see the green helping hands, the responsible care. Unicarbide was declared the safest plant in Texas by the Chem uh, Texas Chemical Council, mm -hmm. which is a bunch of 
industry calling itself wonderful. Mm -hmm. And about two weeks later, the plant exploded, mm. and it happened at midnight or else there have been hundreds of workers killed because it pretty, pretty much wiped out half the plant. They felt it like 35 miles off, breaking out windows. Uh, a couple of the Bhopal survivors, they came to Sea Drift. And for three days, we tried to get a interview with the plant manager here. And it was like, no, he's not here. Oh, no, he's got something else to do. And it's like, we showed up anyway. And naturally, it's like, oh, no, 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 he's not here. But PR man met us, and he set those people who had been through the worst disaster on the face of the earth, he set them through a 30-minute safety film. The events, as first described by workers at the plant, began shortly after 11 p.m. that Sunday evening. Heat began radiating from the ground. Rumbling sounds were heard coming from tank 610. And at approximately 12.45 a.m., the screeching through the safety valve signaled the terrifying release. For the next two hours, 50,000 pounds of a poisonous methyl isocyanate gas enveloped most of the older sections of Bhopal. There's explosions here all the time. It's like I told my wife, if ever I'm at one of the chemical plants and an explosion happens or something happens to me, she knows that there's certain people to call and to make sure that I'm in, it's investigated and not covered up. You know, the first time I talked to Formosa, they said, I said, did you have any violations? And they said, oh, I think we had a little pop vial one time. You know, it's kind of like a garden hose springing a leak. I still remember them saying that. And it was like, I went and they had at one time 148,000 pound release of vinyl chloride in one day. It's all connected. And, and these little corporations, they won't say, no, 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 none of it's connected. We ain't got nothing to do with nothing. It's just little old us. We're just right down here minding our business. It's like, we got nothing to do with all that blood spreading over there in India. Nothing to do with it. But it is. The blood shows. The blood shows. I had been in front of that plant for 30 days. And you talk about security, for 30 days I had been there. And the next day, I took my truck and just drove into the plant and just sit around looking. I said like, you know, that banner would look real good up on that tower. You know, I could, I could get over that fence. And so uh, I got me a hard hat. I got me a pair of safety glasses. And the next day, I got my banner over my shoulder. I put my hard hat and my glasses on. And I just took off down the road. And here come up, here come some workers. They say, you need a ride? And I say, yeah. So I climb in the back. They took me straight into the plant, waited till they left, just climbed down, scaled the fence, scaled the tire. And I was there a good hour and a half. They never even knew I was there. I had to stand up and wait for them to even know I was there. And I chained myself up there. And I was up there for eight hours because they couldn't figure out how in the hell I got in there how the hell to get me out there. A lot of people, only risk they want to put out is their, their name on a checkbook and give $5 to Greenpeace or $5 to the Sierra Club or sign their name on a petition. But the, the key is putting your life at risk. That's where change happens. I'm going to 